Hey guys, so if you're familiar with my channel so far, you'll know that I like to bring statistical analysis of deck performance by simulating thousands of opening hands and categorizing each hand as great, good, bad, or a brick based on a set criteria. Now today I'd like to cover a topic that's been debated a lot in the Cyber Dragon community, which is comparing builds that play machine duplication with three original Cyber Dragons, or no machine duplication with just one Cyber Dragon and I ran a simulation of 100,000 opening hands for each build and compared the numbers in this video. And if these kind of videos interest you, consider liking the video and subscribe because it really makes my day. Now right off the bat, I want to say that I'm supportive of both builds and I'm happy to see that the people in the Cyber Dragon Facebook group have always been very civil about this debate and respectful of people's choices in what build they want to play. And while I'll be providing you with an analytical breakdown of how each build performs, I want to make it very clear that the point of this video is not to show which build is better than the other, but rather to show how the numbers look and provide the pros and cons of each build and how you should pursue the build that fits your playstyle and comfort level. Now in terms of the deck list, the machine dupe build you see here is the same as the one I showed in my deck profile video and my first analytical video. And while my build has slightly changed since then, I thought I'd keep it consistent by using the same list for this analysis. As for the no dupe build, using the same list as the dupe build, I simply took out the two original cyber dragons and the three machine duplications, then put in a third soldier and a veer, and that meant I could put in three additional interruptions, which I opted to go for two veilers and one pankertops. Everything else in the build is the same, on purpose to make them as similar as possible just with and without machine dupe. So now that you know what the deck list I'm using for this analysis, let's get to the definitions. Now I decided to change up the definitions for how a hand was categorized as bad and brick compared to my first analytical video on pure cyber dragons. So please don't compare the results you see in this video with that first one because it will be comparing apples to oranges. Now a great hand was defined as being able to summon out infinity, have either core in hand for the summon for the current turn or at least get it to my hand to summon for the following turn and have at least two usable interruption cards. The definition of interruption cards for this video include cards like hand traps, back row removal, and the like, generic going second cards. Now keep in mind, because I'm only considering going second cards as interruption cards, Cybernetic Overflow is not going to be considered as an interruption card and will be considered as a dead card for this analysis. And it's also important to distinguish that I'm talking about usable interruptions and not total number of interruptions. An example I gave in my previous video is that if I have a hand with one ash and two ogres, and I draw another ash as my sixth draw, then even though the total number of interruptions is four cards, only two are actually usable. Ash and ogre are each once per turn effects, and I'm assuming that a hand trap drawn as a sixth card doesn't count because it was not in my opening hand of five, as my opponent will be comboing off. A good hand was defined as being able to summon out an infinity with at least one usable interruption, or having access to core with at least two usable interruptions but not being able to summon out infinity. Now when I say access to core moving forward with this video, just keep in mind I mean having core in hand for the summon in the current turn, or at least getting into my hand to summon for the following turn. Now a bad hand was defined as one of few possible scenarios. 1. Having access to summon out infinity, uh, with or without core, but have zero usable interruptions. Another scenario is when you have access to core, but having just one or no usable interruptions and no means of summoning out infinity. And lastly, the other scenario where a hand would be considered bad is when I have one or more hand traps in my opening hand of five cards instead of six, because you would need hand traps in your opponent's turn, or board wipe cards in my hand of six cards, but no infinity and no ex access to core. Now, board wipe cards would include things like evenly matched and lightning storm. Now, a brick was defined as having zero hand traps in my opening hand of five cards, have no board wipe cards in my hand of six cards, and have no access to summoning out infinity and no access to core. I chose to go with this definition because I think it makes a lot of sense. For example, if I had no line of play for infinity or core, and I only have cosmic cyclone in hand, that's technically one usable interruption, but that's not going to do anything. And in the same situation, but let's say you only have Jizakuru, then it's not like you're going to give them a 3300 beater and then pass. So I specifically needed hand traps or a board wipe card not to be considered a brick. Now in my deck list, I actually don't main deck board wipe cards like Evenly Match and Lightning Storm. So for this simulation, this is actually relying solely on the presence of hand traps. Now to quickly go over some assumptions. First, my opponent would not have any hand traps or negates to stop my effort of going to infinity or core. And this is to ensure that my measures are consistent 
Also, my opening hand will consist of 6 cards, as I am going second with this deck. Next, I'm assuming that my opponent has at least one monster on the field so that I can special summon Cyber Dragon, but I'm not assuming that my opponent has a monster in the extra monster zone for me to contact fuse. Otherwise, the proportion of my great and good hands would increase because sometimes you may just need to get that original Cyber Dragon to grave to start your play. And lastly, going into infinity will always be prioritized, even in awkward situations where you have no choice but to pitch a light hand trap for a Galaxy Soldier. And if this happens, then I would subtract from the number of usable interruptions accordingly. Now I understand that this assumption may raise some eyebrows and it's certainly not the way you may always play it out, as you may decide to use a hand trap anyways. But I did this because I wanted to see what the maximum amount of times of being able to go into infinity would be in both builds. Also, the situation where I had no choice but to discard a light hand trap to go into infinity didn't happen all that often, so rest assured, don't think that this assumption ruins the simulation. Now I'm not going to show you my code anymore since it's just going to get repetitive, but if you are interested in this part, feel free to check out my last two analytical videos. Anyways, after running the simulation 100,000 times for each build, here's what I found. So there's a lot of data presented on here, so let me help you navigate. Now when we look at the proportion of bricks, or in other words, having no hand traps in our opening hand of 5 while our opponent is going off, and not having any board wipe cards, the dupe build bricked just about 1% of the time, while the no dupe build bricked around half of that amount at 0.5%. But overall, the brick percentage is low in both builds. Now if you look at the proportion of overall unfavorable hands, which would be bad plus brick hands, the dupe build is at about 18.5% versus the 16.4% in the no dupe build. And the proportion of great hands, again, at least based on my definition, was just a smidge lower in the dupe build at around 42% compared to the 43% in the no dupe build. Next, I looked at the amount of times the build can go into infinity and or get access to coin hand to be able to summon it for the current turn or the subsequent turn. Remember, based on my assumption, I always prioritize going into infinity if I could, even if it meant that I had no choice but to discard my light attribute hand traps which of course I would subtract from the number of usable interruptions accordingly. Anyways, with the dupe build, we were able to go into infinity 84% of the time and have access to core for the current or subsequent turn 83% of the time. Conversely, the no dupe build could go into infinity about 79% of the time and have access to core 76% of the time. Now the lower percentage of going into infinity in this build shouldn't be too surprising because even though we did add another galaxy soldier, machine dupe allows for the easiest access to infinity and we are taking that out. Still, I was actually pretty surprised that the amount of times that we can go into infinity in the no dupe build isn't that much lower without having access to machine dupe. Now you may be wondering how the no dupe build had a comparable proportion of great hands when it goes into infinity and have access to core at a lower percentage than the dupe build. Well, if we move on and see the number of usable interruptions in each build, you will see that the number of times where we had at least two usable interruptions was about 61% in the dupe build versus the 73% in the no dupe build. In other words, while the no dupe build may have had access to infinity and core less often, in the times that it did, it's more likely to have at least two usable interruptions than the dupe build. And finally, having absolutely zero usable interruptions happened about 8% of the time in the dupe build versus the 5% of the time in the no dupe build. Alright guys, so before you close off the video early, I really want to kind of regroup and go over some key takeaways from this analysis. Firstly, I think it's fair to say that my analysis didn't show that one build was clearly better than the other. Instead, it showed some pros and cons of each build. So for example, the dupe build meant that you can go into infinity and core more often, but it also came at a slightly higher proportion of unfavorable hands than the no dupe build. With the no dupe build, while you may not be able to go into infinity and core as often, you are also much more likely to have at least two usable interruptions. One thing to consider is that this whole great bad hands were all based on my definitions, right? You may disagree on them and have your own criteria, which would certainly change the numbers. And other things to consider is that remember that the assumption was that my opponent wouldn't have any hand traps or interruptions. Right? In a real duel, you would have to consider having to play through these interruptions and this could affect how each build performs. Not to mention, I'm only considering my very opening hand and not the performance later in the duel, like drawing a dupe or a hand trap mid game that could be dead. So overall, I hope my video has taught you sort of the rough baseline numbers to go with for the two builds, but ultimately, it's up to you on what kind of style you prefer. And they both bring their strengths and weaknesses. 
For example, the dupe build can facilitate easier OTKs, make going first to go first a bit easier since you have easier access to infinity and can prioritize the core search for overflow, and also helps you play through Droll or other card effects like Dark Law or Macrocosmos that banish since dupe will still allow you to go into infinity. But also the cons would be that you know you can draw a machine dupe with no targets in hand and drawing multiple original cyber dragons in your opening hand sucks too. As for the no dupe build, it gives you more room for some hand traps and theoretically should brick less. Now not being able to go into infinity as easily may be a downside, but perhaps not always. And of course, if you are under Dark Law or Dimension Shifter, then you are totally locked out of going into infinity. Either way, I think it's safe to say that whichever build you go with, Cyber Dragons in general is a very fun deck to play and I hope you find the right list for you. Anyways guys, that's all I have for today, so I hope you enjoyed today's analysis. If you want to see more analytical videos like this, then make sure to subscribe and like the video so that I know that they are of interest for you guys. Alright, well, take care guys.